The following video is sponsored by Skillshare. Welcome back to BlenderDiplom.com. I'm Gottfried Hofmann and in this tutorial for Blender 2.83 or better, I want to show you the knife tool. For this I go to edit mode and down here we have the knife tool. I click to select it and what I can do now, I can cl click and then move my mouse and I see a nice preview of what would happen and that is I could create nice straight cuts. Now let me right click to cancel this and do this again and I can also cancel this with the escape key. Now let me do this again but this time I left click and that will confirm it but it's not finalized. So we still have a preview of what would happen and I can even look around and what I could uh, for example also do is I could create new cuts like here and so. And you see that if I create further cuts, it even cuts through uh, parts that are not created yet. So it respects the preview, which is really nice. And now let's say I want to finalize this. And for that, I can either use the spacebar key or the, let me undo this. It also works with the enter key. And now you see I have created a cut and it's finalized. It's baked into my mesh. I have created new geometry. Now let me click here again and move my mouse. And the interesting thing is if I click here, it will create a new cut. So it's also working if I click somewhere inside of my object. And you see here that when I hover over an edge, the edge becomes yellow and the, um, the point jumps onto the edge. That means it snaps. And the same thing works with vertices as well which I can see up here. So let me click now and now I've created a cut right through the vertex or right that uses right this vertex. And now let me hover over this again here. And now as you see, um, um, currently it's snapping, but if I don't want the snapping, if I want to say um, create a cut close to it, what I can do is I can use the shift key and that it won't turn off the snapping all together, but it will make it way less visible. So it, you still can snap, uh, for example, to a vertex, but it's way more difficult now because uh, most of the time it will ignore the snapping and create even that way you can create very fine, very precise cuts um, where you don't want this to snap somewhere else. Now let's say the exactly we have exactly the opposite. We want to create a cut that um, snaps to where one very specific location. That is, I want to create a cut now that snaps exactly to the center of my edges and I can do this. So for example, let me do this here or here and I'm doing this by using the control key, which is pretty useful because it lets me snap nicely to the center of those um, edges here. And this even works uh, if I create a cut like this. And now let me hit down, hit me down the control key. And now you see the preview of the orange uh, dots. It has changed tremendously because when I hold down the control key, the cut will always respect the center of the edges. So that's of course a very checked result, but it's also pretty good because uh, that way it prevented us from creating degenerated faces too easily. The next thing I want to show you, and for this, let me finalize this cut, is if I click my mouse and hold down the C key, no, not holding down, but clicking the C key, now my cuts are constrained to angles of 45 degrees, which is actually pretty useful because, for example, that way, if I go here and create then the second cut, I can, for example, create cuts that are parallel to each other. Now let me hit the uh, C key again to um, create further cuts. And what I want to do is I want to create a cut that actually cuts through the entire object. And that's not happening by default. If uh, you look on the other side, all those cuts I've created, they are only affecting the one side, but not the other. So let me undo this. And this time I click and immediately after I clicked, I hit the set or C key. You see down here, set. And now it's, it's uh, reads cut through turned on. And now if I, for example, click here, you see that the created cut is cutting through the entire object. And that might be an option you want to use quite a bit. So why always press the C key when using the uh, knife tool? You can turn this on by default if you up here turn off occlude geometry. Occlude geometry means uh, it only cuts visible geometry. If I turn this off, now if I click and drag, you see down here cut through is now on by default. Now 
One other thing I'd like to show you is that uh, when I here, and for this I turn occlude geometry on again, if I click here and create my cuts, let's say I um, have cut through like this. Now, if I double click, you see it will create a final cut that closes the loop, but that only works if you do not change your perspective during the, the operation, because if you do, let me show you, I'm creating a cut here, 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 and over here, and then I want to move over because I want to go down. And now if I want to finalize the cut, you see it goes here while the original point was over there, and that because this place is where the original point was on the screen when we started this, before we rotated our view. Now let me hit enter for this. And the last thing I want to show you before we move over is that um, we have the option only selected, and this will create a mask. So this um, now only what is selected can be cut, everything else will be masked away. So if I create a cut here, now you see that this is only affecting the parts that are selected. And another thing, you can use the cut tool as if you were drawing on the mesh by clicking and dragging. And when you click and drag and do not release the mouse, it will always create a new vertex when you move over an edge. And otherwise it will let you draw freely. So this is actually really, really interesting if you want to draw like um, shapes right from the cuts. You can do so by using the knife tool and just clicking and dragging. So now we have created uh, quite a um, complex geometry. What I want to do now is I want to show you the other tool that hides behind the knife tool. You see there is this small, um, very small triangle here. And that means if I click the menu, I can end, keep it pressed like 0 0.2 seconds and it opens up another menu and here it reads bisect. And this is the other tool I want to show you. It works very similar to the knife tool. I click and drag and that creates a new uh, like a 3D plane, but it's weird. And that is by default, it will not um, work on geometry that wasn't selected before. So now let me hit the A key to select everything and create the cut again. Now it's way more visible. And uh, that's one of the main differences between the bisect tool and the knife tool is that the bisect tool by default only works on selected geometry and there's no way to turn this off. So what was an option in the knife tool here, it's turned on by default. But after I've created this cut, since I've selected all the geometry, it now works. What I can do is I can move it afterwards using this widget here. The arrow widget will move the cut plane along its normal. And I can also rotate the 2D cut plane using the circle. And you see that it rotates around the pivot point. That's the center. That's this one here. So if I move this over, now I can rotate it like this. So you have a really nice widget to um, make changes to the bisect plane to uh, move it back and forth, to rotate it or to change the pivot point. But there is still more to it. I had shown you that the uh, knife tool doesn't have this nice menu down here. The bisect tool does. And here we have uh, the following extra options. The first one is down here, uh, clear inner or clear outer. If I clear the inner, it will in this case clear everything to the left of the arrow. And if I clear outer, it will clear everything to the right of the arrow. And now you see all that's left is my uh, silhouette of my cut. But of course I can turn those off again at will and thus leave either one or the other part. And I can also fill this, which once again works from both sides and the filling also works if I clear both. So I can even fill the silhouette. Now let me remove the clearing and the filling. And now you see that uh, the cut I'm creating is actually creating extra geometry when there is already some geometry we could use for the cut. That is the one that moves down here, right here. So there's an option for this. And if I increase this axis threshold, you will see that piece by piece, our cut will move, use the geometry that is already there. So this is the new uh, geometry for the cut or this is the new cut. And um, you see it's not perfect, but here, for example, if I choose it like this, it now finally uses the original geometry and I still get a cut that goes through the entire object. So this is it about the knife tool and bisect tool in Blender 2.83. This video was sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes ranging from creative topics like photography up into more broader concepts like time management and productivity.
Speaking of productivity, that's one of the topics I'm very interested in because I'm always trying to accomplish more with less, which by the way is also the title of the class by Greg McCohn, where he shows us how to be more productive by eliminating the non-important things and focusing on the essentials. And that includes a few good tips on how to say no in an elegant fashion. The first 1000 who joins through the link in the description will get two months of Skillshare for free.